G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Today I'm trying out the Helicontex Bergen backpack for the first time. Now I've loaded it up as if I was going to do an overnighter. Well actually I've loaded up as if I was going to do a weekend at least. And I still didn't fill the whole pack. The pack's made out of a Cordura fabric. They don't say what uh, thickness it is, whether it's a 500 or 700. But I think it's at least a 500 because it does feel fairly tough and durable. It weighs in around the 1.5 kilos empty. The idea of getting this pack was to replace the 511 Rush 12 pack I've got. Even though I've used it often and as a general pack to use it's, it's okay but it was just a little bit big and there was a few things I didn't like about it which I've shown in a previous video when I did a review of it. So the Rush 12, 24 and 72 I'm going to put them three packs up for sale. Here we are, I found a nice stump so I can actually stand up instead of getting down on the ground. While I've got the pack in this position, I'll show you this. So on the bottom, we have four attachment points where you can you know, lash your uh, swag suit or your sleep mat. I've got the bivy in there at the moment. So, pack. I've probably got about 90% full and using all this it's uh, got ants all over it already off the tree stump I looks. You're going to be able to see what you are able to carry in such a small pack. So here we go, that's the, the bivy. And as you can see we've got four lashing points and underneath each lashing point there's a hole like this to let any dirt or water out if it gets in your pack. So that's uh, thought out well. And then on the top, I've got my sleep mat. It's a self inflating one. So it's actually lighter than the bivy, that's why that's up on top. And again, there's four more points to lash your pack, uh, lash anything to that you need. And the same as most, we've got the small little mat pocket. And how big that is at the moment, it's got my spare batteries and bits from the microphone, the map folded over, an actual survival um, bag, not just the blanket that goes over you, you actually get inside of this one. That all fits in here quite easy. It's not a massive one, it's only where are we? that wide so like I said that's about six seven maybe eight inches at the widest going down to about six inches at the bottom and it also comes underneath the zip here the zips all the zips are YKK zippers so they're pretty good quality but this will show you the if I put that down at the bottom I suppose you could just get the map in there by tucking it underneath that. So I'll give you an idea of the actual length. Just checking I'd press the record button. The harness system. Now I normally prefer packs with cinch straps at the top or shoulder straps. 
So you pull the shoulder up a bit more if needed, but this doesn't have it. We have a nice grab handle. The back is really, uh, really comfortable. It's a fairly stiff sponge in there, or whatever they used in it. But it's walking up here, I was expecting it to be rubbing, but it actually molded quite well into my back. We've got the cutout pieces here, I'd call it, which is the air vent, allow the airflow. Now, I did have some perspiration, we've been about 30 degrees centigrade today. But this section was not as bad as the rest of this. This was really with perspiration, but it's, it was near enough dry. It was damp, let's say that way. So it did let the airflow through. We have a little grab handle here. It didn't interfere, didn't touch my neck or anything. It was just out of the way. That's a doubled over, nice and stiff. Real, real strong by the feels of it. Now the shoulder straps are about, what's that, about 10 mil thick, half an inch-ish. Like I said, I'm, I'm used to having the actual straps up here to lift the shoulders up. I could feel them when I didn't have the actual waist belt done up very tight. But it was nothing serious, they were still fairly comfortable for something like this. A lot more comfortable than the 511 I've got. And we've got the quick release buckles on these. So if for any reason you need to just drop your pack and get out of the way, that's you're able to with that. We've got the uh, sternum strap or your chest strap. And it's got the elastic at the back. So it is going to move with you, but it's going to hold your shoulder straps, stop them falling off your shoulders. You've got the webbing coming down, which you can attach to. I've just got my watch on it. But you can attach small pouches if you want to, just to add to it, whatever you fancy. And like I said, you've got a waist belt or your hip belt. Now you can take this off if you want, just by putting it through and taking it out. Quite straightforward. Good size buckle, strong. A definite lock into it, so that's going nowhere. The actual, we've got the notches going at an angle and actually clips over this side here by a good one and a half millimeters. So that's, that's gonna last a good while before it even wears out, if it wears out. Easy. Adjusting it up, but that's it, undo it a bit, and once it's on, going nowhere. You do have your elasticated, so you can put your belts for there just to help keep it tidy. I haven't needed it, so I've just pushed it all the way back out of the way, and it just means it's easier for me to keep tightening it up if need to. Now, getting to the front, the outside. We've got three pockets on here. The capacity of this, they say the main compartment is 18 litres. So I've put stuff in there so you can work out how big that really is. But thinking about it, I've got enough in here where I could last three, four days out already. And we've got the one pocket on this side, I'll show you what I've got in here. I've got my water filter, and I've got a one litre canteen, and I've still got more room in there to fit more stuff in it. So, pull that down. Some nice buckles here, the same as the uh, waste one, just in a smaller version. Same on this side. I've got a first aid kit in here. All my toiletries and that. First aid kits, and it's got a snake bite kit in there too. And again, even with that in there, I filled all the space. That's probably about 80% full. Again, the buckles, which are adjustable.
in the front pouch. These are all stitched on, they can't be taken off. I've got my hoochie in there, or your basher, or some tarp. And that fills it up. So you can get it in there, it's a little bit tight, but it's not going to bother you actually getting it in. And again, you've got your two buckles with your cinch straps, if you want to call them that, so you can cinch it down. And like shown in there, this pocket also has your line lock, so you can actually cinch it up closed to hold whatever you've got in there in place, which isn't really needed with the basher being there because it's so big, it's not going to fall out. Okay, do them back up. Each of the pouches, you can fit an axe down the top. It comes all the way out the bottom. The one here, we've got the axe point here. Not as wide as these ones, but the uh, more knife, um, I think it's a bush axe or the camp axe size, fits down there quite comfortably. There's two pockets either way, or either side, which are stitched at the bottom, so whatever you put in here is not going to drop through. And this one, as you can see, I've got my Laplander folding saw, and I've got my bush knife on this side. It's uh, nice and secure. Again, we've got the small buckles. That's it. Pull it out first, so it goes, we can adjust them. The actual straps come from the bottom. You've got three webbing points, which they're tucked behind. And this has got a good fold over, so if it's going to be in there, that's not going to come out unless you tuck it underneath yourself and want it to come out. So that's another backup. You've got your morale patch here, your hook and loop, for your morale patch to go on. And the lid, I'll show you that. They're elasticated at the side. So if you're going to put anything in there, it's going to stretch and it's going to keep a decent fit. Helping to keep dirt and rain out. And before I go inside, what we have here is a flap and we've got some molly webbing. So if you wanted to attach a small pouch or some carabiners, they could be there. And if you don't want to use it and you want it out of sight, you tuck that back, back over and it's a nice clean finish. What you do have is your hydration port. Exit, there's one on each side. So let's go in this end. Two points of cinching. The main compartment. And then your expansion part. So you could actually pack this up to that height and your lid would still come over with your straps adjusted and still hold in place. So there's that. First thing we come to, there's a small pocket stitched in here, which that's my wallet. Most of that's cards and receipts, not much cash in it. But that's big enough for a fairly fair sized wallet. You could get your keys in there also. You could, I suppose you could even turn that into a basic first aid kit. So all the first aid gear straight in there or you could drop your kit into it. So you could just pull it out and use it whenever. Okay, let's show you what I've got inside. Enough food for four days. I'll probably stretch that to a little bit more, maybe five or six. I've put the large canister in, which I don't normally use. I normally carry a smaller one. I've got my little Cedar Summit Airvoss pillow, the premium. The 750 Tokes um, pot in there with the bail handle. Spare clothes. That's jocks, socks, pair of pants and a shirt. And the next thing, and the last thing in there, is my sleeping bag from the Valhalla. 
uh, their Nightwalker 3. Now, that's compressed all, all the way down. Or I could probably take that further, but that's not the smallest one. Most uh, sleeping bags you can compress smaller than that. And that's it. Enough in there to, like I said, survive for four or five days quite comfortably. Ah, what I haven't shown you is this, sorry. We've got a pouch to put your hydration bladder in there. And looking at that, you could probably fit a three litre in there. A little cinch, a little buckle to go through your bladder to hold it up so it's not going to sink inside your pouch. This zip here goes through to an aluminium uh, strengthener and a, a nice, nice heavy duty rider fields with uh, frame to give the pack shape socket cl uh, collapsing in on itself. And like I said, the material is a Cordora, but the feels of it is about, I don't know, it's about 500, 750 Cordora by the feels of it. You feel the actual waterproof coating on the inside. I'd say this is water resistant, I wouldn't say waterproof because you've got the uh, drain holes at the bottom, but if it's raining, I'm sure it's going to take a fair bit of downpour to get your kit wet inside the pack. So let's put this back now. That's a sleeping bag in. I should close down the side of it. It is a tight fit. But that's okay, it holds a pack in shape. Cock kit. Gas. Food. Pillow. And as you can see, we've still got plenty of room in there to put more stuff in. And if you wanted to, just hold that in place. We could lift it up even higher and get even more gear in there. So for a small pack, it's a bit like a Mary Poppins bag or the TARDIS, if you're a Doctor Who fan. There's the decent cinch hooks, decent cord. Feels nice and strong. It's like a flattened a uh, paracord with the inside taken out but it's really nice and strong i do like that again i'll just bring that over so cinch this one back up get it tough the sleep mat back on top These straps I made myself. I just ordered the uh, the webbing, the buckles. I'll just put like a bar stitch across here, and that's going to be more than strong enough for what I'm going to be using it for. That's it, that's that one on. That's, that's it, that's better. Tighten it a little bit more. Going nowhere. And I'll put the bivy back on the bottom. do with the loose straps is where the loops are underneath I pass them back through
and that's where the excess is out of the way so it's not going to be dangling around the back of my legs or getting caught on anything so that's the Helicon Tex Bergen bushcraft pack like I said it's 18 litres main compartment I think with your side pocket and the back one you could probably add another four maybe five litres in capacity of uh, equipment and stuff that you need I normally use a hammock which takes up less space than the the bivy just mind the microphone yeah the hammock normally takes up less space than the bivy, bivy. and the this time of the year soon we won't have to put it that way use a under blanket or not a thick one so that means that will compress down smaller with a top blanket than the sleeping bag I've got there or I could even use one of my smaller lighter sleeping bags too which will take up even less space in the pack so just at the initial look of it now I could get away with using this carrying stuff like I said the same as the bivy on the bottom the sleeping mat on top and what's in there and the pockets me personally now I could be out here five six seven days or more and once I learn a bit more about the brush tucker I could probably be out there here even longer so if you enjoyed this video and it's the first time you've been to my channel please go down below and click on the subscribe button click on the notification bell next to it please click on the like button because that helps my channel grow and to all my subscribers I thank you very much so until next time get out there have some fun and take care